<laughs> I can see my laptop in the mirror. <laughs> that's that's new uh, peacock talk. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Amy and I today for this session. We're going to be talking about tarot cards today. Um, we mentioned this, didn't we, a little bit in, we kind of went into it in our last video when we talked about the guides and we ended up talking a little bit about tarot. So we felt like we would come on today and talk to you guys about how to learn to read tarot. Um, so we don't want to go fully in depth with exactly what every card means. But we want to, because we want to allow you guys to use your intuition. That's how you want to use the tarot cards. It's about knowing roughly where the image, what, what the, the card means, but then using your intuition to bring forward the message. So, I don't know where you want to start. So what is the tarot? Like, I mean, if you were to compare like tarot to oracle, what would you say is the difference? I would say that the tarot brings a story and it uh, to me yeah it tells a story so you can see where you are in the journey but to me oracle cards are just about little messages little things whereas to me the tarot is the base of the message and i use the oracle cards personally to bring out little bits of clarification so oracle card there's so many oracle cards including my own now can i yeah um, yeah i love them they're so cool they're so cute, aren't they? They're so small. I wasn't gonna actually. I wasn't gonna say anything in this video, but they just happened to be sat there. So, yeah, <laughs> oracle cards are messages. They're like small messages. They can be about anything. But the tarot is always. Why don't you give us some examples? Can you give us some examples? <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you my favorite. My favorite card in my deck so far. Let me show you. Is actually the passion card because I love the couple on there. Whenever I, every single picture was chosen really carefully, I want to, the energy to come through. So, for example, this is the passion card. Okay, uh. so it comes with a message underneath, and it says, "Do not be scared to let passion flow into your life at this time." Uh. So, the oracle cards, the light's not very really good, is it? So, these just bring in messages, small things, little, and there's you know we can get oracle cards that have messages that have advice. Um, and oracle cards come in genres as well. You can get like romance ones, you can get work ones, you can get spiritual ones. Whereas the tarot is, yes. So you've got the romance oracle cards there, right? I I love that yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Just jump it out. Aw. And you deserve love. Perfect. So they each contain a full message, so you can just pull like even one card per day, and it'll be like, like the the universe's little little wink for the day. Yeah, like a message for the day, or you can look at the energy of the week and get <laughs> this one. <laughs> this has been coming up a lot. I think a lot of people are getting married in two thousand nineteen. So it's going to be a lot of, I feel like I've been channeling loads of unions in 2019, loads of twin flame unions. Yes, yes. I just said that on my um, January video, my January reading. Yes, you did your first um, reading, right, on YouTube? No, the first for 2019. Hey, heightened the oh. ah, We just did this. Nice. Our last video was about this. It says, yeah. be extra aware of your inner knowingness as it is trustworthy. You know, it yeah. takes practice, just like with the tarot. Yeah, it does take practice. Yeah, so, yeah, so we can use the oracle as just like just 
you know, um, yeah, let's explain how the story can kind of work with, with Tarot. Like when you first started to learn like how to do a spread or like what spread. I'm going to just interview you, even though I know this stuff, but you know, just interview me back if you, if you want to ask a question. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think, yeah, let's do it. So, so for me, I learned everything by the main, I learned the major arcanas first. And then I just learned what each suit means. So you've got, for example, the swords. Now, everything runs in order. So you start at an ace with those suits and you run into up to um, a king. So you go from ace to two and then up to 10. And then you have your page, knight, queen and king. So you can see how far someone's come along on the journey by the number on the top. So if it's like a nine, ten, you know it's something that's completing. If it's a, a younger card, like a one or two, it's a new beginning, it's a new cycle. And then when you get to the five, it can indicate a change. So some people read the numbers. I don't always like do it if I feel guided to. I don't know, do you read numbers when you do when you look at your tarot cards? It it really depends also. Like some, yeah. if I if I really take my 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 time and just I mean I like to I don't read reversals. Like reversals means that that there's like a positive and negative meaning to a lot of the cards. And so, um, or I don't know if you can, it's positive or negative, but just different meanings, whether it's upside down or right side up. So um, I don't do reversals, but I do all meanings of the card. And I found that to be pretty darn accurate. I mean, it's, yeah. for example, like the three of swords, which I don't have right in front of me, but the three of swords, um, it could be heartbreak. It could be, you know, really examining what's what's going on within your heart. And so that's also representative of like reconciling with someone or fixing a broken heart or healing a broken heart. It's all the same, right? Um, seven of swords is like somebody manipulating or sneaky or getting away with something. And it's um, it can also be a surprise because that's when you try to get away with something too. So it can be very positive depending on the cards that are around it, um, uh, six of coins, it means that there could be an imbalance in the, in the giving and receiving in a particular relationship or situation. But it can also mean that the balance is being corrected, that there's being balance brought back. So, you know, when, I, when I'm doing the cards, I just look at the relationship to the other cards to be able mm -hmm. to determine, um, you know, what, what, what they're trying to say. And a lot of times I give all the meanings and yeah. 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 Cause I think that's where, that's where you have to start to use your intuition. Cause really, I mean, if you guys watched the video that we posted yesterday um, about connecting to your guides, we talk a lot about intuition and like just listening to what comes to your head first. And I think if I pull out a few cards, the first thing that comes to my head with this particular card is why the cards come out like I pulled the nine of swords before which is you know quite a distressed card someone that's very anxious worried maybe overthinking um can't sleep um but I pulled this card before and I thought no they're okay now they were here now that would if it came out in reverse I'd say they've come through it but sometimes you don't even have to read it in reverse if you use your intuition because sometimes it will come out and I just feel like no they're through they've gone through it they're through it they were there, but they've gone through it. So it really is your intuition with looking at the other cards and just feeling the energy. <clears throat> so, yeah. yeah, it is all about just trusting what you hear when you pull them out. Well, yeah, and like if the Nine of Swords is with the Four of Swords, you know, they've realized yeah. that the worries are not really all that big of a deal, that they're, that, you know, they were kind of self-imposed worries that were... Um, you know, from their own thoughts and they're healing from that now, you know? Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I just jumped out of my head. <laughs> oh, I, well, can, I, was say, like, I can run through some general numbers, um, if you want, and then you can add. So I'll say what it generally means to me. And then maybe you can add to it. If you think that the number means something more or. Yeah. Do you want to go through, what, do you mean the actual number, or do you mean the cards, or do you want to do both? I don't have them in order, do you? No. I don't either. Okay. But, I mean, if you guys want to look it up, you can. We should have been better organized that way, but that's okay. Zero generally is something has completed and something else has begun, and it's almost like the, 
And like anything possible, I think of the world card when I think of zero two, but it's like um, a clean slate. What do I want to do with this? You know, what can I create from here. And um, and then number one is actually like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and yeah. It's knowing um, it's actually doing something to go forward into that new whatever it is. It could be a new job, new relationship, new something. Um, and the, well, the aces are kind of like stars because aces are like the new beginning. Aces can be one, can be. Um, yeah, I always think aces is the one. Yeah, it, because aces are also kind of like, if I get an ace or a sword, like a king or queen of swords, all three ace of swords, king of court, swords, queen of swords, to me mean yes, also. Anyway, okay, so one, new beginnings, two, coupling, pretty much, or coming together or partnering or friendship or something that's coming together, working well with someone. It's just partnering up and teaming up. Um, yeah one person. Uh, three is like teaming up with more than one person. It's like, um, it's like a collaboration. It's, you know, may, maybe if you're bringing a business or something together, you would get a three. It's also like a catalytic moment to me. It's like um, something that starts a fire, something that starts, that, that kind of sparks. It's like an, it's, it's something inspired, um, just a catalyst um, because it's kind of three is a little bit, wonky i guess it's not quite four so it's kind of like something needs to change here you know um, and then four is like stabilization um something coming together and causing security to happen it's like bringing a community together it's um creating some kind of a foundation it makes you feel good fours make you feel good fours are my favorite number so um, <laughs> five is change to me so when i see fives it's like okay here we go um go with the flow it tells me like just surrender because you know you're not gonna you're you're not gonna get anywhere if you stay in this five energy so just know that it, things are gonna change for you um and oh my gosh huh? i just separated the deck at the four at the four <laughs> oh that's that's the second time like wedding has come up um so is like six is like the lovers and passion and like just just like really um hanging on or grasping to something whether sex or otherwise it's just like kind of a i don't know a very passionate feeling um yeah. and spiritual so mm. it's like uh, spiritual partnerships or spiritual thoughts or spiritually based i i see like purple as i say that eight um, trusting in the cycles of life, knowing when things die, they also are born again. Um, also twin flames, cause twin flames are about like constant rebirthing. Like you're always dying and getting born again and like yeah. learning this, yeah, learning that. And it's just these constant and learning how not to beat yourself up and just kind of go with the flow. Um, nine independence, almost done with something, feeling fairly accomplished, but not quite totally to your goals but you're almost there and it's kind of like um like it can be i don't know i i'm for some reason nine of pentacles is coming to mind so um but yeah we don't need to get into the details of each card but okay so tens are like just completion generally so what about you that's well yeah i see it like that and i see it I mean, I don't personally read the numbers whenever I look at the cards, <clears throat> but I do always base, you know, the beginning, the middle, and the end somewhere. So if someone's going through a particular hard time, but they get loads of nines, then I think, look, you're nearly there, just hold on, because you're nearly through it. Mm -hmm. um, if someone gets loads of, like, because obviously you go into the pages, the knights, the queens, the kings, if someone gets loads of page cards, I think, okay, they're still learning to do, there's still growth. If they get loads of kings and queens, you can see that that person is pretty stable. They're kind of through things. They know where they're going. They know who they are. So it really depends sometimes on not necessarily, because so I, guess, I guess what people struggle with when they want to learn tarot is what, you know, every single card has, three or four different meanings and how on earth am I supposed to learn all those? And I do understand because I felt exactly the same. But if you, I think if people take what we're teaching 
as a general, it was just, it's just so much easier. And I just think, yeah, if you looking at where they're positioned, if they've got loads of aces, yes, there's a new beginning. If they've got tens with it, there's an ending of something and then a new beginning. So something's dying off and something's being reborn. Um, and yeah, with the kings and the queens and everything, you can either see like if it's a page, something new and immature, you get something's young. The knights, okay, you're moving forward. Knights are always about moving forward. Queen, it's like she knows who she is. King, done, they're there. So yeah, just like if you struggle to read every single meaning of the card, just, just looking at the way that we've just explained it is a really simple way to just be able to see where someone is and what the messages are. So it's just a really general, that's how I do it. That's how I read it. Yeah, and maybe like when you're first starting out, just just for fun, um, take the card, whatever card comes out, and describe it to you, to the person that you're doing the reading for. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have a, a friend of mine who's learning the tarot right now, and mm -hmm. she'll say, I don't know what this normally means, but I see this guy leaning, humped over this wall, and he's, you know, feeling, he looks like he's, he's like, struggling, and, and so she'll describe the card to me, and I'll say, you know, so what is that? What does that feel like to you? What does it feel like it's saying to you about this situation? And so then I'll have her say it to me and then I'll explain to her what the card it actually means, like in the tarot, yeah. the tarot meaning. Yeah. So she's, so she's making up her own, feeling into it intuitively, looking at the picture, seeing what the picture is depicting. And there's so many different tarot card decks that it's like ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because the image artwork. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Because I, I learned. I don't know about you, but I learned with the Rider Waite deck, which is what yeah. you have in your hand now. It's what I'm holding, but I'm holding the gold version. Um, and that's a really good way to learn. Yeah. So they just look like this, and they're a really good way to learn because the image. You can, like Amy just said, you can look at the image and get a feel for what the image is and give the message through that. And because the images on these particular cards match what the meaning is, yeah, so you've got the Ace of Cups right there. So in general, this is about walking away. Some people yeah. think it's negative, they pull out and go, oh my God, someone's gonna leave me or something's, something's ending. But actually, you know, he's walking towards, you can interpret it however you like. He's walking towards the moon, he's walking towards the light. So maybe this person is actually walking towards something better and leaving behind things that just don't work anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so you can look at it, you know, he's walking towards the mountains and the grass. He's, he's already, you can see the stream. He's already crossed the stream. So the stream, if it runs fast, it's dangerous. He's crossed it already. So he's left, he's moving it. You know, you can literally, I've never really looked at it that much before, but that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm getting when I'm looking at it, right? So it's like, this person has crossed the Yeah. So, um, fresh air maybe he goes needs to go to the mountains and go camping for a little bit <laughs> exactly and even like i'm looking at the moon it's like well he's walking towards the moon the moon is a fe is the feminine element so maybe it's walking towards more feminine energy more intuitive energy like you can literally it's whatever comes out when you're looking at the card yeah and what does blue mean blue means communication he's walking towards blue a blue sky mm -hmm. or green it's right it's green yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's in red, so he's grounded. He's like he's he's you know. So red is yeah. Passion. You can yeah yeah. So to to me so this, can, to me this card means that you've got like eight shiny cups full of whatever fulfills you, makes you happy at a certain point in time, and then mm -hmm. you decide you know what I've got it all. I've, I've got it like, what do you give to the person who has everything, right? They're yeah. just like, you know what, I want, I want it all. And he's wearing red, so that's passion. He wants the two of cups that are missing from this picture. Because the ten of cups yes. is totally a gap. filling pictures. I'm trying to find my one. So that yeah, he's like, I'm just leaving all, all that I have behind because I want to go find true love. And exactly. The journey to, to do that or he knows where it is and he's going and it's a little treacherous but he's he's out of there he's going after true love Ooh. exactly yeah so you can see like the difference between your card and mine so although it's the same image the colors are slightly different the image is slightly different because different artwork but this is why you can buy so many different decks because we're looking at like looking at yours like we just said he's moving towards passion he might be he's looking for love maybe he's looking, like what everything you just said 
then you might look at this card in this deck and it's not as bright, it's not as vibrant. So maybe you're going to get a whole different vibe from it. Maybe you're going to get a different idea of the colors. Like there's no any blue in this because it's gold. <laughs> um, so maybe there's not as much communication. Maybe there's not as much passion. It's not as red. So you, whatever deck of cards you use, you're going to get different messages each time, even if it's a similar yeah. image. Well, but I, I will say. Well, I would recommend people learn with the the Rider weight deck because it's like the the traditional that everybody knows, and that way when they're talking. Yeah certain cards you understand the general meaning it's still like English first and then learning foreign languages because yeah. <laughs> then you've got like a, a foundation to build up. if you already know what the eight of cups means then you go to a different deck that's wildly different you'll be able to take the the foundational knowledge that you have about the eight of cups and then build on it based on the other card that you see and and make all yeah. the stories up of it it's so fun yeah. <laughs> The Empress. Let me find my Empress. This is such a color, Sorry. such a colorful card. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Obviously, this woman's in her power, right? Yeah. Um, have a baby. She's pregnant. <laughs> Why did we go there? <laughs> <laughs> she could... I think maybe there's a message for an Australian somewhere. I don't know. See, like the weirdest stuff comes out. But <clears throat> yeah, the Empress, and you've also got the Emperor. Um, she's in her power. She's pregnant in this card. So obviously it can mean a pregnancy, but it can just mean like the fertility of things, something growing, something new coming in. Um, and not only that, a female has to be, a, a, you have to be a female, obviously, to bring children into the world. You have to be something, you have to be an energy. So to me, it always means like if someone comes out as an empress, it's like they know who they are in order to create something. Mm -hmm. So it's a really strong card. It's a really, really, really strong. She's wearing a crown in it or she's wearing a hat. She's so relaxed. Like she's just really, yeah. she's, she's so like confident and she's got that queen in her. She's all casual in her nightgown <laughs> with a crown. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I can wear this. I'm a boss. I, I pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you obviously know, my card is red green, so hard feeling. Yeah. So it's like she's, and then the yellow, you know, the aura around her head, and the mm -hmm. yellow is new beginnings. Red is passion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so it's just so fun to to read into these, you know. Yeah, I feel like mm -hmm. we should go through some of the um, major arcanas. Okay. Do you feel like you want to do that? Yeah. Talk about the we don't Why don't you show them? Go ahead, you go ahead and show them from the Okay. So we've got the justice card. And and one thing about the major arcanas too is that they um when you get a bunch of major arcanas in somebody's spread, it means they're really going through a lot. The, the, these yeah. are big deals. These are big, big moments. Yeah. Not just little words or little um things that are happening. They're just they're big events. Have yeah, minor arcana has a lot of major arcana. <laughs> okay. So, like, the, I always think of the minor as just little things, daily things that they may be thinking about or going through. When you get to the major, it's like this is probably there as a life lesson. They're going through it. It can't really be changed or manipulated. They have to experience it. It's that kind of pillar. I call them pillar cards in my yeah. head. Really? Yeah. 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 Speaking of pillars, so we have. Mm -hmm. just here which um people can you know if you're talking about relationships and stuff this can be it can be paperwork being signed contracts can be divorces or it could be new contracts beginning new work contracts it really depends on the cards that are out with it but some people also read it as balance things becoming balanced when you've been things have to you have to get justice if you've been putting putting in a lot of work it's like it's going to come back to you because mm -hmm. To me, this is quite a karmic card. It's like what you reap, you sow. So if you've been giving a lot, it's got to come back to you. It's got to find its balance at some point. Um, but if you want to look at the card itself, again, she's wearing red, passion, healing. She's got orange behind her. So you've got the sacral chakra, you've got the green. So she's healed. Um, and the pillars, I always think of the pillars behind her, like keeping her up. She's stable and she's ready for things to become more balanced. 
And she has her bare feet on the ground, which I love, because to me that's like, she's, her feet are firmly planted on the ground. It's not like a wishy-washy, oh, I don't really want to sign that, I don't really want to do that. It's, no, this is what we're doing. It's a very this confident <laughs> Yeah. She's wearing a crown, so, yeah. How do you see this card? All the major arcanas. Um, yeah. But it also, it's like, it's intimidating at first because there's like, it's like, I look at each card as like even a character. And once you learn these, it is like a language and you'll be like talking to somebody and all of a sudden you'll see like Ace of Cups. Yeah. <laughs> you'll see a visual of the card and you'll know what's going on with that person stuff too. Okay, so I found I think even when like you and I talk, we talk in tarot cards sometimes. We'll we like, do, oh my God, yeah. you know what? I'm going to eat a cup here. I just can't, you know. <laughs> we, when, you, when you learn tarot, you do, and you have tarot friends, you talk like we that. We totally get it. Yeah, we're just like, oh, I'm having such an eight of swords moment or something, you know. No. Yeah, but the sun, the sun is on its way, I can feel. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, for me, the justice is, is like a big breakup, divorce, or something like that, anything contractual. If I see that um, somebody's going through... Um, any type of court situation, I'm like, you know, it's going to come out just fine. And, um, it's a, it's a good omen if there's a, if there's a um, court situation going on or any unfair situation. If someone's saying, you know, I'm being victimized by this person or something's, you know, that I see the justice, it's like, dude, you got like a big brother looking out for you. Like <laughs> somebody yeah. to save your butt. Somebody is going to rescue you. You're going to be just fine. Yeah. Um, okay, so here we go. Which one do you want to do next? The four. That's the one I haven't found yet, Amy. <laughs> okay, I'll start describing. You can find it. Um, the fool is at the, is at the very beginning. So maybe his life has been destroyed, you know, and he's like, all he's got left is that bag. <laughs> he's got like a stick. Yeah. And at this point, he's, like, done anyway, so he's just like, you know, it may as well just start free and clear and without all the baggage. I'm just going to start fresh. This is my yeah. plate. I'm willing to take a risk. I'm going to go out on the ledge, and I don't really care what happens. It's kind of kind of an effort kind of feel. Like, yeah, <laughs> just, I'm just going to do it and take a risk and not care and yeah. not be so scared and not, it's just a, a nice, fresh feeling. And He's always got that loyal dog with him. So it's about mm -hmm. a, a faithful companion or just knowing life's got your back. You can, you can trust. He's about to walk off that cliff if he's not careful, <laughs> but he's just like, it's kind of like, I know the universe has my back. Mm -hmm. what, so how, yeah. it's, and yellow is, is for new beginnings too. So happy. I love this card Cause I always see it. It's like, like exactly how she's, how you said it. And I always feel like it's, um, if, you, if it's a new beginning between two people or it's a new beginning between a situation that you've been in, it's kind of like someone's finally saying, do you know what? I'm not going to look at the negative anymore and just, I'm not going to see the obstacles. I'm just going to have a fresh outlook on this and just go for it and just jump. Yeah. So it's, I think it's always a good thing. A couple gets in. Yeah. Take a leap. It's like leaving the path. Yeah. And there's not, there's not, there's not a cloud in the sky. It's just yeah. it's clear. And, you know, when you can really stay in the moment like that, when you can just be like, whistle while you work. <laughs> just, yeah. Things just work yeah. out for you when you have a good attitude and you just like, just, you know. Yeah. And I love that he's always got a flower, which to me, I always think, just smell the roses. Don't worry so much. Enjoy the little things. Take a, take a new outlook on something. Take a risk. Well, and I've had so many of these moments when I've just had everything destroyed, like you've gone through a divorce or you've gone, or you were totally betrayed or stabbed in the back or, you know, something like that, where you're just like, oh, okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He's actually really nice. It's like, like you said, he's only got this little satchel. That's all he's got. He hasn't got, he's not carrying baggage from the past. He's yeah. not carrying people. He's just like, I'm free and I'm going. It actually reminds me of when I came to Boulder because I packed up, every, I sold everything. I had an, a really cool apartment in Granbury, Texas and just fit everything that I, I it was jam packed in my car, but I fit everything in my car that I wanted to take with me. And it was just like, I'm going to Boulder. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know. I like, 
I have no idea what Boulder's even like, but here I go. <laughs> and everybody was like, you know, Amy. <laughs> Everyone was like this dog, it's like saying, what are you doing? What? Yeah, yeah. They're like, we don't worry about you anymore. We just know you're going to follow whatever you do. So it's really, yeah. my parents were kind of funny about it. But yeah, that's, that's the feel of that. And it's a good feeling when you can be in that space of just not, it's not even like not caring necessarily, but just, you know. Yeah. yeah. Nothing's going to hold me back. I'm going, I'm out. Exactly. I'm doing it. Exactly. <laughs> Um, which one have you got next? These aren't in order, by the way, but you guys, that we're just, we should probably talk to you about like how we, how these relate and spreads too, because there are so many different yeah. people can do. But. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Temperance. It's, it's like bringing everything into balance, bringing it all. It's like, Getting one into, I always think of it as like a nice warm hot tub. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because you can see, is this, I don't know if this is meant to be Archangel Michael. I always read it like that. But I don't know. Um, he's got like one chalice that's got hot water, one that's got cold, and he's tempering it and he's trying to find that right temperature. Um, so to me, it's always like someone just being really careful and making sure they're getting everything in order and just everything's finally balancing out. There's no one sidedness everything's smooth. I always look at this water and think it's calm, it's smooth, it's not a river, it's just like, it's just water, it's still. So um, yeah, everything's yeah. kind of coming into balance. Yeah, and the two cups are also representative of true love, the two of cups card. So it's yeah. balancing it out so that true love can happen and it's like trusting in divine timing and knowing that one cup will pour into the other, you know, and they will feed off of each other rather nicely. When it all comes yeah. in balance, there will be yeah. spring. like this one looks really springy. There will be a spring for you, but you just have to like in the timing of it and let it work itself out. Yeah, there is an angel that's overseeing it behind the scenes. So if you don't see anything happening, it's like just trust that they got your back in the scenes that things are being. Yeah. This is it. Just seems like such a. This would be a great. To have a card like this, like framed in your in your bedroom, to remind you that everything you're being looked over, you're always safe. We got yeah. you, you know. It's, it'd be a nice, comforting yeah idea to have in your bedroom or something like that because people stress out when and they want yeah. you know yeah. yeah. And so it's got but, the sun in the background, so it's like a happy yeah. Story. Yes, <laughs> totally. And the what's what's up with the crown? Like, okay, see the crown. Yeah, like, like the third eye. Yeah, intuitive, trusting your power, walking down that path, and ultimately coming into your power. Mm -hmm. Whenever I see crown, he's got, one, he's got one foot in the in the stream. Yeah, as well. One foot in, one foot out. Just kind of just check yeah. it. It kind of reminds me sometimes. Masculines do that. You know, they'll come forward a little bit. <laughs> I was going to say, this is the masculines do. They do it. Do I like it? <laughs> is, it gonna, is my toe going to get bitten off? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What are we going for? <clears throat> I've got death. Next. This is a very, like, people get so scared to get this card. They're like, oh my gosh, the death card. Is somebody going to die? <laughs> <sighs> Well, with death, there is rebirth, right? Yes. Reborn. We have to let go of the past in order to open up to the future. Yeah, and so it doesn't I always necessarily mean like a, a physical death, like somebody dying. It's, it's transformation, basically. Yeah, it's the end of a yeah. cycle, beginning of a new one. And there's mm -hmm. this card. Whenever you see like somebody moving in the card, like this horse picking up its leg, it's like a forward moving action and yeah. it's like for purity. And that guy is like, you know, he's, he's got the flag hanging. So he's like, there's some pride in it, but he feels like he's been through the ringer. I mean, he's like, looks pretty dead, but yeah. risen from the dead, <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. There's just so much, there's, there's so much in these cards. But the guy, your yeah, there's a guy in front of him that's like praying like this as well. Yeah. 
like here. But I mean, even without getting into all the details of the card too, it's just like, if you just, if you just take this card as transformation or death, sometimes I'll, I'll do like, um, I'll get kind of playful with the readings and I'll just go something like, you know, <laughs> okay, something has died. Somebody can be courageous. Somebody's having their wishes fulfilled and then they're going to be really yeah. determined to hold on to something and then they don't want to be left out in the cold anymore. They want to change their perspective on it. You know, it's like, you don't have to, you don't, you don't have to just get a general gist for the card to get started. Yeah. Yeah. I think because everyone, I think it's important for people to realize that everyone reads differently. So don't try and read the way that other people read because that's just going to get you muddled and then you probably lose confidence. You read how you read. Like when my sister learned, she doesn't read like me. I look at the card and I know the meaning of the card and that's how I express it. Whereas she'll pull out like 20 cards and look at it and go, right, this is what I'm getting. This is the oh, message. Wow. That's okay? cool. So everybody and then, but then when she, when she starts, she's like, oh, Laura, but I don't understand what this card means. And she'd look at the card and she'd get so upset because she doesn't understand what it means. And I'm like, no, that's not how you read. Like, she learned to have her own style like everyone does. So don't try and be the same as everyone else. Find your own style. So you know? how do you do, like, how do you read the cards in terms of, like, a spread type thing? Like, for, for me, I just um, kind of discovered a, like, I... <laughs> I was in 4-H as a kid. <laughs> so, <laughs> head, heart, hands, health. But, that, that, I mean, you could do health, but usually when people want to know about relationships or something, they want to know um, about, about what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what any, are they taking actions towards you, and if so, what kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll do head, heart, and hands, or some people do, like, past, present, and future. So maybe we should pick like um, past, present, future and just show people like how they kind of relate to each other. Yeah, you can do that. You want to pick one card for each. Or did you, did you want to go through all the major arcana? I just. I mean, it's up to you. We can go through them really briefly. Should we just go through them so people understand what they are and yeah. without going in depth? Yes, yes, yes. And then that's right. done, isn't it? And people will. So I don't know what card you have next. The Hermit. My favorite. The hermit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the hermit is all about inner knowledge isn't it inner seeking inner wisdom if you don't hear from someone for a couple of weeks they could be in this hermit energy just keeping to themselves trying to figure stuff out trying to shine the light on the next step you know trying to figure it out yeah and if it's a situation that if you look really close that those are stars in there so they're trying to figure out what their bright future is and they're going in yeah. Or um, to find out, you know, who do I who do I truly love, or what what do I love about this person? Or they're really trying to like look look for what's truly going to going to bring them love. Yeah. Hierophant. Hierophant. Um, so the hierophant is can be commitment, marriage, um, knowing that something is divinely guided by God. There's those two people in God, and here's a catalyst. A catalytic moment since it's three something um yeah what, what about you i always yeah i see it as the spiritual co connection between two people um sometimes i see it as destiny like something that's meant to happen destiny mm -hmm. divinely guided but there it's Tradition. meant to be it's put there on. yeah it's it's there. like if this is between a couple then you know that they have a spiritual connection they probably knew each other in their past life it's very very solid you know yeah. um but it can, as well as the, these two people here so it can be marriage just two keys as well it's like you both have a key to the kingdom now um that's kind of yeah that's how i see it so and if we, you get that if you get the high priestess with that too which oh let's do that one next yeah you get the high priestess that's the counterpart to him yeah he's the spiritual yeah. teacher she's the female spiritual teacher he's the male spiritual teacher kind of thing yeah exactly yeah like so, uh, yeah it means that they so, there, this is a power couple right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I get this a lot for Twin Flames, mm. these two cards, when they're near a union. Um, but yeah, because she's very, she follows her intuition. She's always divinely led. She knows her power and her value. She knows her worth. She's very wise. Um, and again, she's protected with these pillars. I always see that as well. So, And she's so calm. She's just like totally in the moment, just trusting. Yeah. 
her intuition. Yeah. She, she has like hope. I think of sunflowers and I think of like hope and faith is right behind her, but she doesn't yeah. have to look at it or anything, you know, anyway, I'm getting into the, again, it's so easy to do that. <laughs> she's, she's a wise psychic woman. Also, it's like, yeah. Psychic, and you're doing a spread for somebody. You can tell they're thinking about you because the like the psychic card comes. You'll be the psychic, yeah. especially if they yeah. with it. <laughs> uh, the emperor, somebody coming into their power, taking the lead. Um, in the negative, it can mean somebody's being too controlling, depending on the cards around it. Uh, you're passionate though. Look at the, all that red. It's like he is going to get what he wants, man. He is determined. He's like, I'm making this happen. Yeah, to me, that's exactly how I read it. I don't know what mine is. Um, but someone stepping fully into their power, owning something, taking control. Um, he looks kind of mad. <laughs> he knows who he is. He doesn't take any nonsense. Yeah. He sits in this room. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's the counterpart to the Empress, who's the, who's the same. She's the one carrying the children. He's the one in, on, you know, on his throne. Mm-hmm. Okay. The star. What I like about the star is it's like about, about hope, but your desires and wishes coming true. She's vulnerable. She's naked. Anytime you see somebody naked on a card, it's like you feel like you can be totally vulnerable and authentic with that person. And yeah, go ahead. What else? Um, yeah, I see it the same way. Hope, having faith in a situation. And also to me as well, like being divinely led. I feel like to me, this is like the universe taking care of you. These seven little stars in the background represent all the chakras. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like in alignment as well. Everything's in balance. Everything's where it needs to be. And the chakras are surrounding the star. So. And another two. Um, we already did justice. Judgment. Judgment. Judgment's like feeling called to something. That angel is like, it's like the Pied Piper. <laughs> it's like, here I yeah. come, no matter what, I'm doing it because I feel like magnetized toward you and there's nothing I can do to stop. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, and judgment, I think it's like judgment day. It's sort of looking at the past and ready to begin anew because this is, you've got the, the couple here with the child. It looks like a child. So it can be known as like the resurrection of the lovers as well. The lovers moving forward together, um, got being guided by Archangel Michael here. And, um, and just making, to me, it's like, to me, because me, to me, Judgment Day is really looking at the past and being like, right, that's the decisions I made before. So where am I going to go now? And because of everything you've learned, you're being called to this new thing, being called to this new beginning because yeah. you're ready for it. Yeah. Totally. It's a big past life card. Yeah. Life in this life and past life and from other past lives too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're all being called. There's people in the background everywhere. Everyone's being called forward to this next thing. And even going towards their purpose, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you make yeah. a judgment call and you kind of change directions in life because you're being called into this. So this can also be an indicator that you're being corrected on the right path in life too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, moons people see this as a really negative card i never have done personally um because people think think of this because it does mean secrets so it can be things hidden from you things in the shadows to me i always see it as things coming up to the surface that need to come up and when something needs to come up and it does that's always a good thing even if it's not positive when it does so yes it can mean secrets but it really to me is about just things things surfacing Mm -hmm. things coming up that were once hidden yeah yeah i like that like in like just um in, insecurities sometimes for me too because it's it could be a third party card insecurities about the party you know mm -hmm. it, i like to think of it too like um what was that what was that movie the never ending story if you guys did you see that of course <laughs> when it goes to between those two pillars and it's like this big test Oh my god, with the the Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, Oh, I don't know about this because it's like if you walk through there and you're not pure of heart, you're gonna die. So yeah. kind of like this is sometimes I see it like like that. It's like gulp, let, let's look at the ultimate truth of this and listen to my intuition to see what I really, really, really feel. Yeah. Yeah. 
and things coming up to be cleared in order to have a pure heart. Yeah. The world. I like yours. The world. Oh, please. Oh, I know. It's ugly. Um, to me, the world means two things. The first thing, obviously, is a cycle that's been complete, someone that's gone full circle and come back to where they began. Um, it can also mean travel to me mm-hmm. as well, but she has these animals around her. So you've got like the strength of the lion, um, the wisdom of the eagle, the guidance of the angel, and then the bull. I don't even know what that represents, actually. But I feel like she's surrounded by what she needs. She has everything she needs. She's completed whatever she's completed, and she's ready to start again. Because this, this is, is this the last card in the deck, or is that the Wheel of Fortune? I think this is the... Mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know because I, I haven't looked at it so long. I think the wheel that, might be actually that's kind of that's kind of funny because the world card is an end and a beginning at the same time. So exactly. it sense that we wouldn't know. It's zero. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, again, she's vulnerable. She's naked in this, so she's vulnerable. She's gone through a lot. Um, so, I love, yeah, I love seeing this card with the wheel of fortune. Because it's mm-hmm. like the karmic person's getting kicked off the wheel because that person wants to be with somebody they can really be themselves with. And isn't that yeah. so beautiful when they make that choice? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, tower? My favorite card in the whole deck. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So many people are afraid of the tower. Don't show me the tower. No. no. I love the tower because God, if I put a castle on a hill, I'd rather it hurry up and fall down so that I can rebuild it. I don't want to be living on a hill. I don't want to be living in danger. Like, is that's what this card <laughs> represents? Built on a really like who who builds that on this? That's just it doesn't make any sense. You can't even so go it has to be just. Because <laughs> like, then you can build again. it on yeah, like build it on stable ground. So I I much rather think let things fall. Um, but that's what this represents but also divine intervention as well. The universe saying, right, this doesn't work. We're getting rid of it. So it can feel like a dark night of the soul. It can feel quite heavy when you're going through this energy. But at the end of the day, it's about rebuilding some, a, a, a stronger structure. I've just noticed that we both have gold on this finger. Did you say that to me yesterday? <laughs> what was that? Did you say that to me yesterday or was that? I, well, I, I did a session with Queen of Light. Yeah, did, she, she, did you say that she had it as well? Yeah, we had the same, we all, that's so funny. Yeah. And we were the, oh my gosh, I was going to say, we wore the same color purple yesterday. We're wearing the same color. Cute. Yeah, <laughs> naked. <laughs> I, like to, I like to see this as like the phoenix rising from the ashes too. It's like, let your life get destroyed as you know it so you can just start all over again. Yeah. And with the lightning bolt, like it's more in your card than it is in mine. But with the lightning bolt, it's like the universe coming in and saying, we're going to do, it's like Mother Nature destroying it. It's, it's not a choice. It's the universe coming in and making the decision for you. Normally this card comes up if there's a decision that needs to be made that someone's not making. So the yeah. universe is like, well, it's for your highest good. It's always for your highest good. Yeah. Right? Which brings me to strength. Strength. So when I was just you need strength to go through the tower moment. <laughs> And it's, it's what you get when you've come through it as well. You're left yeah. a lot stronger because you've had to rebuild something. But this can be, to me, this is well, like it's, it's like mental strength, spiritual strength. I remember when I learned about this card and she was saying she's stroking the lion, which is considered a dangerous animal. She's managing to tame it because she's being gentle. She's, str- she's mentally strong and he knows that. He knows that she's not afraid. So he's willing to be around her. Um, so I always see it like that as well. Like she's in her power as well, like mentally. Uri- Uriel saying something. I was going to say you're hearing something because you, yes. you, were, you were looking down, but she's getting something. I, she's <laughs> <laughs> it's something that's, it's, there's a twin flame on the top of the head too. And it takes a lot of strength yeah. to do the twin flame journey and to stick to it as well. Mm-hmm. And it's a tough journey and a lot of times our masculines are those lions and they're frightened. When cats get frightened, they lash out. 
So it's it's a matter of being very, very gentle and taming the beast within ourselves and, and them. Yeah. It's a really great flame card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Last few. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be one of my favorite cards. Yeah, I'll let you just explain this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sun card is just like ultimate play. It's like, it makes me think of when you were a little kid and you'd go out in the yard or go out in the woods or, you know, stomp through streams or whatever. And... Mm-hmm have fun and not care that you like not even think about being hungry or not even think about like anything you're just like so lost in the world having fun that all of a sudden you might hear your name being called way off in the distance um so it's just like it's just like fun and giggles and play and like needing to heal just let go and surrender to life and just it's almost like be so consumed in fun that you don't pay so much attention to um, the stresses of life so much. And we just mm-hmm. don't need play in our lives. Yeah. Tell you how many people I've recommended, like go, go on date nights where you go to a comedy club or laugh or watch a funny movie or, and, you know, you have to have laughter in your life to heal anything. It's the best medicine. Yeah. It's a card of, to me, it's like a card of, like you said, innocence. And because he's on this white horse, it's like purity, innocence. Mm-hmm. And there's a wall around him. So it's like he's safe. There's no danger around. The sun is out. Mm-hmm. The sunflowers, to me, sunflowers represent the light as well. Because mm-hmm. sunflowers mm-hmm. follow the light. <clears throat> so there's a lot of light and there's a lot of happiness. It's the happiest card in the deck to a lot yeah. of people. So. Mm-hmm. And it's a major arcana. So it's something, it's like the sun is going to come up. I, I love seeing this next to the Seven of Swords, even though the Seven of Swords is like, oh no, the Seven of Swords is deception and lies. But like with this card, it's like, oh my gosh, I just get so excited thinking, oh my gosh, some, some kind of big surprise is coming. You can be so happy, you know? So, um, another happy card. Well, it can't, the lovers. It can't, it can't be a happy card. It can be a happy card. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. With Archangel Michael looking over this them. This is obviously a couple that's divinely guided by God, too. It's like, it, it, this is the person, like, once you choose who your person is, this is the person that could last a lifetime with you. Yeah, there's a connection then. Right, choice. Yeah. It's really about making that choice as well. Mm-hmm. And, and wanting to go with the divinely guided thing. It's like, is, is this or isn't it, is this not the person that like God, the heavens want me to be with? Yeah. And last the long haul. Yeah. And pretty tough explanation. There's a lot of passion when these two come together too. Oh yes. Yeah. And I like this intemperance because of the angel that's over them. Yeah. yeah. And the angel's also kind of helping, like, clear the cloud away, clear the fog. Yeah. You can tell more clearly. Yeah. If you are in that position, and I just said this in my reading, too, like, if, if, you, if you are in this position trying to choose, like, pray, pray that the, that the answer be obvious to you, you know? Sometimes we don't think to, to just pray for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I get a lot of people say, I don't understand. Ask for clarity. Ask for it to be really in your face, obvious, so you know what yeah. to do. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Moving forward, movement, no longer stuck. I always see this sometimes as movement with a partnership as well because of the two animals here, which I've never understood what they are because mine have breasts. I don't know about yours, but... Um, <laughs> whatever they are to me sometimes it means two people moving forward together to doing teamwork but in general to me it's just moving forward if someone gets this card they're not to me they're not stuck they're not stagnant they're not in limbo they know where they're going and they're taking action to move forward mm-hmm. um, and he's standing tall there's the angel wings here which to me is like 
spirit is protecting you as you move forward. Um, and he's a warrior, right? Mm-hmm. So he's, he's in his power. Yeah, and sometimes it's like that was the old-fashioned car. So it's like a road mm-hmm. could be happening. Yeah. If you get yeah. the two of pentacles, definitely road trip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Water in a car. If you get water in a car too, that's, that's travel. It could be travel. Yeah. Oftentimes. Yeah. Like, the, like this is just peeking out. Like, see, yeah, he's got all that water around him. That could be travel. Yeah. Either movement or water. I don't know why I did this. Like, <laughs> like the horse. <laughs> like, movement, or, <laughs> movement or water in a picture. That, you know, um, said, like, read into it however you want. It's not about yeah. being correct, necessarily. Yeah. It, it's it's, it's got to be correct in your in your heart. Be correct so yeah you'll feel a bit you read it and you like if you read it a certain way and it's not it's not what the card is saying you'll feel like that push like oh no that's not right something like you might pull a card and go oh it means this and they think no it doesn't you can feel like that resistance you don't want to even say it so just play mm-hmm. around with the different meanings of it and feel what feel what feels good in your heart totally so um now you do some pretty cool cool spreads on your live videos and stuff I like how, can you explain how you kind of do that process or how, you know, how somebody might do the past, present and future cards or, you know? Yeah. Do you, we still have four majors. Do we really? Yeah. Like, what did I do? I don't, okay. Well, I, well, do you want me to go through them quick? I'll go through them quick. Well, we can both. I have yeah, a cat have the on my cards. Okay, magician. Yeah, I think I see the magician. Yeah. I do. He's peeking out. <laughs> So this is like the law of attraction, manifesting something, trying to create something, trying to bring something forward. Um, he's got everything he needs here. He's got the cup, the sword, the wand, and um, the pentacle. So he's got everything that he needs to manifest and create something. And to me, it's yeah. also a card of magic. Of magic what? thing. Oh, magic. Yeah. 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 Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> if you, this is with something else that's what they're trying to manifest that's what they're trying to make happen Woo. yeah okay and then we've got the wheel yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> the hangman so sit um this can be like having a light bulb moment here as you can see there's light around his head so it's like oh you just suddenly have this realization of something epiphanies and things like that um, but it can also be about seeing things from a different perspective. So this person's hanging up from their leg, which they actually used to do to people um, back in the day. He's not in pain because he's not being hung up by his neck, but he's maybe a bit tired and he's because he's been there for so long. He's start, uh, Obviously, if you look at something upside down, it's going to look different to how it looks if you look at it upright. So it's someone starting to see things differently from a new perspective. Um, and of course, because he's hanging, it can also mean suspense, something dangling, something just hanging. No, there's not a lot of movement with this car. It's more about a mental thing, like epiphanies, realization, seeing things, but no movement, things still being in suspense. Yeah, and depending on what it's with, it's like, sometimes I'll see the hangman and go, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's like, it's like still in suspense are going to take forever or oh, yeah. this with the hermit is like oh. but yeah if you see this with the sun or you see this with the four of swords or something like that where there's healing involved it's like oh my gosh this is the best thing you could see this is when yeah. that realizes he's being manipulated by that girl and he could do so much better with you this is when he mm-hmm. like i am so done with being walked all over or having everyone else dictate my life so this can be yeah. a, your best friend. This card can be your very best friend too. And it's all mm-hmm. like seeing, seeing things upright for maybe the first time. Like just like freedom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once he's had that idea, he can come down off that tree and be like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. I've been seeing everything like totally opposite of, of reality. Yeah. So... All right. Yeah. Oh, eight, so, so, we've got, so we've got devil in the wheel. And that's it. Me. Let's do the devil. Where's my, my devil's? So, this is like the shadow side of the lovers because you've got the lovers here in the, in the card deck, but they've got 
chains around their necks. Um, so they're trapped in something. So this could be to me, if so, if a, if, a, if a couple got this, I'd feel like they feel trapped in a marriage or if they're not happy. Um, the devil card can also mean temptations. So tempted to do so. If, if, this, if this came up in a marriage or relationship or anything, I feel like maybe someone's tempted to move away or tempted to do something out of the ordinary because they feel trapped. They want freedom. They want to be free. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like the shadow side of the lovers because you've got the same characters, Adam and Eve, but they're chained. Um, that's kind of how I see it. Now, it can also be passion. <laughs> it could be like I cannot wait to get to you. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it can it can be a good thing with the other you know with certain cards. Yeah. Seduction. <laughs> I'm pet sitting. He is just he's he loves attention. He's hilarious. Um. So yeah, just just that fire fiery passion and maybe even having a hard time. Breaking Away from it yeah it's just like you know some yeah. sometimes it's like this the twin flame can even be like this it's like why did yeah. i go there why did yeah. i go there because now i'm going to be yearning for that and wanting that forever <laughs> yeah. yeah so perfect strong, yeah. strong bonds <laughs> mm-hmm. So the uh, final card, which I'm pretty sure is the last one in the tarot deck, which is the Wheel of Fortune, ending of a cycle, right? Completion. Because um, then we start again at the full. Yeah, you're right. New beginning. This is the end. So, yep. Yeah. So if someone gets this with the full, you know something's ended, gone, completely done, and there's a new beginning on the horizon. Um, you've got the same images here that you had with the wheel, of, with the wheel as well. Not the wheel, the world. So you've got the angel, you've got the bull. Um, you've got the lion and you've got the eagle. So it's the same images. You've got everything around you that you've needed and that you need to go forward. Um, but the cycle has ended. And it's, like, it's, a, it's the beginning of a new cycle. It's a good luck card. It's a good luck, isn't it? It's moving into a better cycle. Yeah. And I, I love this one. If you're looking to see if, if your guy is still with that girl. <laughs> it's like this. He's kicking that devil off. He's taking yeah. that temptation off. And the karmic is t- they're not their true partner so they might have had a karma the devil can be a karmic situation too where i mean it could be anything like a mother a mother who's over controlling or anything but when you see this card it's like they're getting kicked out this person is getting back into their power and they're going to become luckier because they it's like the universe rewards you for kicking the devil off whatever the devil is you get rewarded big time so if you mm-hmm. forge your higher purpose, you know, if this is a situation where you're with a karmic and you know that you're divine partner, you're not with that person and you decide to make a big change and, and just throw all the devil energy out, all the karmic energy out, whatever has kept you trapped forever, whatever's kept made you codependent, whatever's made you like, kept you back and you break free from it, go toward what destiny is calling you to. You're going to have the money. You're going to have the, you know, all the resources you need. You're going to have the joy. You're going to have the, you know, it's going to line up so beautifully. You would not even imagine. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's funny. Like you take the, take the leap, leap of faith to make, to turn that wheel, turn the wheel of fortune and you'll be glad you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So to answer your question with threads, I mean, I never really did, I never, I do what I feel like to do. I never do particular spreads. Like I know you can obviously do like the Celtic spread, you can do past, present, future. There's quite a few different traditional ones. Um, I tend to let my cards tell a story. So I will pull out five, three or five cards and they'll tell a story, they'll tell a journey. Mm. That's how I tend to read them and yes. let them, let them, you know, like, let them play out. you know who you know? does an incredible job of this? You guys got to watch uh, Queen of Light, 1111, if you haven't seen her yet. because Yeah, she reads, like, stories. Yeah, it's, like, incredible. She'll have, like, I don't know, like, 20 cards in front of her. And, and then she'll remember that this one over here in his, in his uh, mental space matches hers over here. And she's like, 
oh, well, he's probably, you're probably going through this because he's going through this over here. And she just relates it all. And you're just like mind blown. Like, yeah. What? Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. She pulls out, she probably pulls up, she probably pulls about 50 cards, doesn't she, per spread. She probably has about 20 per, sometimes it's like 70 cards and she'll have them all laid out and she'll be like, right, this links to this, that's that, that's a mirror there, that's this, and she links them all. So you can read like that. You can read and, and lay them out and let them kind of mix them together you can read them like a story her and i read quite similar in the sense that we pull out a few cards and read like this is what's happening or you can just pull out a few you'll know when to stop pulling so you can either shuffle the cards cut them into three put them back together and then pull and then one by one you pull them or you can just shuffle them and let them fall out it really depends on you as a reader i let them fall out usually but if they want me to cut the deck then they'll tell me um and I'll pull like three or five normally and then feel the energy. But sometimes I can feel them saying more or they'll say, okay, just pull two. I can feel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's so funny because I just had like all these cat hairs fly up in front of me right here and you sneezed. <laughs> so funny. I was like, what did I do? <laughs> Cat hair doesn't go well with me. I get itchy and I get sneezy with cat hair. So I usually do. I don't. I think I just love this cat so much that it just doesn't affect me or something. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, that was yeah, like such a cool effect on my side, though, because you guys could see like this, all this hair like floated up toward her picture, and then she was like, you know. <laughs> So this is, I'll show you like how, how, how I'll shuffle, do this and I'll just like put them in before and back and I just kind of like mix it up like that. And then once I have it all together, I I might've gotten this from Pisces moon or something. I don't know. Somebody did this at one point. I thought, yeah, that's really cool. Then once I do that bit, then I take the, I take it like this and I just kind of stop somewhere, put the rest behind and I flip that one over. Yeah. Feeling left out in the cold or wanting to come in from out in the cold. Yeah. Oh, so either way. Mm-hmm. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. So, and then I might like, um, like sometimes it's kind of fun. You could do like, you could do like a, pick each, each one up and you could just, whoop, okay. You could just say, you know, something's just, um, um, you know, some, no, and this can also be no longer procrastinating. I love this card. It's like, this is no longer, there's no more procrastinating. Something is going to happen to bring this together into a happy family. You know? And yeah. Yeah. there's now clarity where there was a fog, you know, that kind of a thing. But anyway. So, yeah, because the, the soul... So swords are all about thoughts and thinking, like that king of swords. It's someone who's very clear in their head about what they're doing, where they're going. They know who they are and what they want. So swords are all about thinking. Yeah. (laughs) Um, The cups are all about feelings, emotions, love. The ones. (laughs) I can't believe that's come up. Like that's the third time. That's the third time that's come up. Yeah. It's so. Marriage is um, the the ones are about action, right? Taking action, um, and the pentacles are about grounded energy. <laughs> I job. swear to God, I just saw this card like was pulling me. It was pulling my attention. What is that? Who's getting married? I'm not engaged. Are you? I tell no, I'm not. <laughs> Somebody out there is about to get married. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I think a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people watching this video are about to get married. Yeah, I agree. So what I'm going to do as an example, I'm going to pull out five and just read it as a story. Should I pull for you or should I do general? Would you like yeah. me to pull five cards for you? Yeah. I'll ask them to bring out stuff that you don't. Nothing that like isn't being, nothing like being in front of everybody. <laughs> This is the naked truth. 
So I just let things fall out. So I'm just letting the cards fall. If for some reason, like the card flips or it falls and you feel like it just fell, then put it back. If it was meant to come out, it will come out again. But, so let's get four more. Or I'm asking for it to not be completely private information that only like you and I talk about. <laughs> I love the one that your that your mom did earlier. That was so awesome. If you guys want to see that, it's on Instagram, Amy Satori yeah. Instagram. It's like it's so it was so cute. Her mom was like looking at her new car. And she and she's like, Well pull one for Amy and what did it, it was the door. It was the door, and that's such a that's what that's actually one of my favorite cards as well. I've got to be honest, I love every single card. I chose everything with such discernment. But this is the card that you got. It's the door card. It looks like this, and it says, "A new beginning is upon you. It is better than you could ever imagine." Yes. That was the card that Amy got from my. These are my or these are my oracle cards. They're, they're small. I purposely made them small because as people know when they have been listening to me for years, I have tiny hands. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So look literally like look. So oh, easy. I'm the same way. Ooh. I love the mini decks. But is it what is card? It? <laughs> this is the epiphany card. You are starting to realise more about yourself and your journey. That's true. That yeah. is true. Um so yeah, those are going to be available on my website within the next couple of weeks for those who want to buy them. Okay, so I pulled out five cards for you. So the two, there's two cards at the end. They came out, they fell out together. So for me, when two cards fall out together, they're, they're telling a story. They have to mm -hmm. be together, right? So the first card that you got was the Ace of Swords. So Aces are all about the new beginnings. Swords are about thinking. So to me, this is like, clarity on what you want a new beginning like yes I know what I'm doing I know where I'm going I'm good I feel like you've left the so I'm going to read this as a story I feel like you've left the past behind and now you're moving forward because you've got the four of cups Give people the card so that they know what you mean by like putting the story together or whatever <laughs> okay yeah okay if I move that if I move the laptop down <laughs> <laughs> would be removed from YouTube. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> oh my so God. these cards kind of fell out together as well. So you have the Four of Cups with the Knight of uh, Swords. So you've got two sword cards here. So there's a lot of clarity in where you're going. So there's movement forward here. With the Four of um, Cups, I feel like this was opportunities that didn't come to you but to me they're kind of saying like things that weren't meant for you aren't with you yet for a reason obviously you know that things that are meant for you you will receive so there's things in the past that you may have felt like i really would love this i love that and it didn't come to you but that's okay because now you're clear that this wasn't meant to be and you're clear for a new beginning to move forward okay um to move forward in with your new journey <laughs> uh, <laughs> So if I have a card that I can't feel the message, I clarify it. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to clarify why I, I know what the card is, but I don't understand why. Okay. So you've got the seven of wands. So the seven of wands to me is all about protection, uh, being very guarded, being like defending something. And then you've got <laughs> the eight of wands. I feel like this is going to be you defending changes because you've got movement forward, you've got a new beginning, and then you've got fast action. And I feel like there's going to be, few, be a few people that are going to say to you, oh, like, like what you were saying with moving to Boulder. People are going to be like, Amy, um, do you want to talk about this? You're like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to discuss it with anyone. And you've got the seven and the eight. It's like moving forward, right? So you, when I see sure seven, I know what this is. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you defending this move, this new movement. So, and this to me, this is the fastest moving night as well in all the night, all the nights. So it's like, there's a lot of very fast moving things here, lots of decisions. And that's come out with, these two came out together, 10 of wands, two of cups. Mm -hmm. So 10 of wands is like carrying a lot of weight on your shoulders, carrying burdens, but the two of cups is the beginning of a new relationship, friendships, however you want to label it. We'll go general because we're live okay. on YouTube. 
mm-hmm. watched by thousands yeah. of people. Um, but it's like putting, because this is a 10, it's like completion. Because you've got an ace here, a new beginning, it's like you're going to put down or they're going to put down anything that they're carrying that's too heavy. Or also, they're telling me putting down stuff that isn't yours to be carrying in the first place. That's what they're really, that's what they're really saying. So mm-hmm. anything that you think, you know what, it's my problem, you do it. No one do that. And also receiving blessings. They're saying don't carry other people's problems. Receive your blessing. It's time for you to receive your blessings now. So, mm-hmm. and that is going to be coming in the form of this two of cups here, which can be the beginning of a new relationship. This card to me, I love their cups are at the same level. So it's two people who are exactly on the same page coming together, same level. And you've got the protection here of this sort of angel line that's on the top. I don't mean, I never mm. understand what that is. It's like a lion angel. Um, but they're looking eye to eye. They're looking at each other. They're on the same frequency. They're on the same page. So that's how I read it. I read it as like a storyline. Yeah. And okay. congratulations on whatever you're going to do really quickly. <laughs> Something's <laughs> going to happen. So yeah, I'm, moving. I'm doing this. I'm moving this. I'm doing this. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's how I read cards. But everyone can read in their own way, you know. I think yeah. if we try and read like someone else, we get ourselves stuck and then we go, I can't do it. Well, you can't do it like that, but you can do it the way that you are meant to do it, you know. Yeah. Um. I'll do, I'll do like head, heart, hands just real quick. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have it. <laughs> oh, oh, let's just, let's just see comes out. Let's just see what comes okay. out. So in, in someone's head, <laughs> I'm just, so I did that shuffling thing that I just did. I'm taking the layer off the top and I'm taking one here. In somebody's head, they're wanting to make an offer. They're wanting to get something going forward. They're wanting, they're wanting to reach out to you. This, this is something little. It, they may even be insecure about it. They may be like scared to offer it to you, but they want to make you some kind of an offer. I mean, it could be a, a dinner, a date, a text, a, just about anything, but it's something that's something that's more solid something that's more tangible, something that's more real. Um, <clears throat> but again, from, a, from kind of an insecure standpoint, because it's just that little page. Yeah. Um, in this person's heart, they have a lot of regret and disappointment. So that's probably why this is in their head. You know, they're mm-hmm. uh, just causing this. So this, uh, this in his heart space would explain him be kind of feeling insecure about making some kind of an offer going forward, right? <clears throat> so in his hands, his head, heart, hands would be, this is the action he wants to take. And again, it's another page. So he's like kind of shaky about making something happen, but he wants to communicate. In the meantime, he's probably spying on you because he doesn't know what else to do. <laughs> he's like, I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing. No, I don't want to. I don't want to do the wrong thing. I hope my offer is going to be big enough or better or good enough to make up for all this past regret and disappointment. There's all this spilled. There's all this spilled liquid here, whatever that liquid is. And I want to turn around. I want us to turn around and see the two of cups there, the true love that's behind it. So only we could talk to this person and say, <laughs> you know, just reach out. It'll be fine. Who cares? Yeah. Past regrets and disappointments. Just you know. Mm-hmm. just walk away from all that go forward just yeah. go after those two of cups go get those two mm-hmm. just go forward just just yeah. be brave and just do it just have a have communication get clear with them you know? and I know that, that applied to like a lot of people <laughs> right now yeah, I, bet, I bet loads of people watching it like that's me that's me exactly. yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. so oh yeah. that just flipped over too Building a foundation, feeling solid and grounded. This is also what I consider like the husband card or the hubby card. New beginning in love. So um, this could also be like, this could be somebody holding on to somebody, something being stubborn, but I get a more positive feel for it. Like somebody wants to build a foundation with you and create something really solid and stable and mature. 
and and offer you the gift of love if you could be courageous enough to do it. <laughs> it's just yeah, I'm sure lots of people can resonate with that as well. <laughs> what? I'm sure lots of people can resonate with that as well. Oh yeah. So it's it's just so fun playing. Around. But there's no there's you can't do anything wrong when it comes to learning. There's the no right or wrong cards. Yeah. And readings, and you can always Google card spreads, and that can yeah. help you. You know, you could just yeah. play around with it like that. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> do you know like any facts about the tarot, like how it got started, or anything like that, or or? I do actually. I have a tiny amount of knowledge. So, it was to do with the church. People will correct me in the comments, I'm sure, but I believe it was something to do with the church because, um, yeah, I there were certain things, yeah, there were certain things that people weren't allowed to talk about, certain things that people weren't allowed to say. So, they created the tarot cards um, so that they could communicate with each other about things that they weren't supposed to be talking about. So, oh. I think it became, yeah, like they would. It, it wasn't like, I'll go, I think it was like, I'll go to a reader and see what's going on. It was more like, so for example, they've created this card here. Things are moving forward really, really quickly. It would be more like they pull out a card and, and it would just be that card for that person and they would keep it to themselves. I, I, guess I kind of saw them like in church sliding it underneath their lap, like that's for you. Or like, well, it was ways to communicate without getting into trouble. And then it got oh, bigger and bigger. Yeah. 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 That's what I read somewhere. When I first started learning, I read that somewhere. So it's always stuck with me. That is really cool. That is really mm -hmm. cool. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so that's what I asked, like, <laughs> was it like, how does the tarot work or whatever? And it's, it's like the universe tries to talk to you in so many different signs. It could be a billboard or it could be your phone ringing and you get a notification at the perfect time when it's one eleven or 11-11. Or, you know, something that stumbles on the ground and it's something that's meaningful to you and it's just, or you see a ladybug on, you know, there's so many different ways. But it's like when the, you, you, when you can create a tool for the universe to be able to talk to you and it's like intentional like that, it can be so much more effective and powerful and straightforward. Um, and it is a good idea to set the intention beforehand, you know, like I always ask my divine guidance counsel to be, to be, you know, to keep all the information honest, truthful and clear. And, and to help me to understand the meanings of everything, like how they intend. Yeah. So, you know, if you set the intention beforehand, you're not going to, you know, people worry about like, is the tarot like a bad thing? Is it something that you shouldn't mess with? And should you not look into people? Like I've had people say things like, um, you know, do you, should you, should you be looking into and spying on other people, you know, with the cards and stuff? And, um, you know, when somebody's not communicating with you, you know, you can, you can surrender and just, you know, do, I mean, it really is the best solution anyway, just to surrender and just be present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything always works out if you can do that, if you can be in that space. Yeah. It's just nice because the, because spirit is never going to tell you anything that's going to be like something you shouldn't hear. It's going to let you know what you need to know in order to go forward or in order to hold on to hope or not, or, you know, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Cause telling you you'll feel lot. that like, yeah. If, if you, if someone asks a question and I pull cars and I'm like, they're not going to tell me that they're not going to give me the answer. So you will never know. You're never learning. It's not like you're learning people's secrets or learning things about someone and being sneaky. Yeah. Because the universe will give you stuff like that. It's stuff like yeah. you said, if you're meant to know it or if it's good for you to know it, then you'll, Learn it. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that. it's my. I think it's my candle. Your candle's done that. The last couple. It did the other. Yes, it never does that at home. I never does that when I'm on my own. It never does that when I'm reading ever. So I've only ever done it today and when I was on the phone to you last time. It's the candle. It's making a sound like it sounds like a conversation. It sounds like somebody talking. Yeah, well, to me, it sounds like water running. Yeah, something. Yeah, that's really interesting. Let me ask the candle what it's saying. <laughs> okay, speak to the candle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on a minute. 
Oh, it helps you find your, it, it, the card it was like talking about our conversation. It was saying that you can find your way in the dark with the cards. It's oh, yeah. Help light the way and be kind of like the lighthouse in a fog. Yeah. You find your way home. And it's, it's not real specific. Like some people will say, well, what's the secret he's keeping from me? And I'm like, that's none of your business. <laughs> yeah, that's a secret. <laughs> just just yeah. be the soft, just be the soft person that he can talk to about it. Just don't be judging, yeah. be validating of his feelings when he comes to you with it. That's all. It, it, it yeah, you, you know, like if so, some people are like, well, I don't want to see anything bad, like death or like anything like that. But it's just like sometimes knowing, it's like having a hint of something coming can help you prepare for it, right? Yeah, you yeah. know know that your person might be struggling with telling you some kind of a secret or something. You're just, you, you don't have to go, you don't, have, it's neurotic and it's unhealthy for you to spin out on that and to, to obsess over what that could be. The healthy way to take that information and look at it is to say, okay, so if somebody has a secret and I'd like them to, to feel free to talk to me about it, then I, I need to practice and do whatever I can on myself so that I can be receptive and, and, and um, validating and non-judgmental when they come to me about it. And then you're prepared. And whereas yeah. if you weren't prepared, they can sit you down and be like, um, I need to talk to you. And you'd just be like, so, you know, stressed out. And then they would say something and you might be like really defensive about it, you know? So the cards can kind of be like, you better be ready for somebody to tell you a secret because they're going to come bearing their soul. Yeah. And you're like, all right, okay, I can handle that. I can do that. <clears throat> so. I think it's important as well to always ask for like your ego to be put to one side when you try and read because especially, I, I know a lot of people struggle to read for themselves. Um, if you ask your ego <laughs> to move to one side, then you'll find it easier because sometimes we project, don't we, onto the cars. Like, I love this person so much. I want really nice cars. And then you're in that energy and then you pull the cars and you get like the two of cups and the ace of cups and the six of cups and it's like oh my god yeah i'm gonna marry it and you know and it's like oh, yeah. ask your opinions <laughs> and your ego to be put to one side so that you can get a proper strong, <laughs> a proper strong like look at the cards without projecting onto them because we i do see a lot of i understand that with like the twin flame and the soulmate we tend to channel for our own collective sometimes not all the time yeah but we, we do, do. And, and, yeah i think that's okay to channel for the collective that you're in but you do see some readers putting stuff onto cars and saying stuff about cars. And I'm like, I sort of, like, there's been times where I think, how on earth did you even get that? And, and then when you know them, you think, oh, it's because that's exactly what's happening in your situation. So you can see that some people just project their own feelings or opinions because some people can be quite biased. If, if someone, if a reader wants you to be with a soulmate and not a twin flame, they're going to push the energy of the soulmate, right? Rather than, even though the energy on the twin flame is very strong, or if they've been yeah. cheated on, they're going to push, like, so, you know, like whatever they've been through in their experience, they're going to push that if they're projecting what onto that? it. So it's very important to make sure you get a one, yeah. you know. <laughs> I'm so glad you made that point. That's like, that's, oh my gosh, that's like so important because when you're, when you're doing um, readings for somebody, it is just like, we, we all have our opinions, we all have our stance and, you know, we're twin flame leaders, but it doesn't mean that, we can't choose a soulmate. It doesn't mean that we don't know. We don't know all of the goings on out there and what it's all about, what it's all for. We think we do, but yeah. our bigger things being synchronized and bigger, bigger things pulling us to make decisions that we do and to have things happenstances and things like that. That I mean, you just, you just can't judge any of it. You just have to read the, cards and your intuition purely and just give the information just really straightforward without yeah without making it about you or what you feel strongly about or what you know your beliefs are yeah yeah so true yeah. <laughs> well is there anything else that you wanted to talk about before we could we've been on for a long time it's gonna be a super long video um but i hope yeah. everyone's found it helpful i mean i i it's it was it was just explorative you know it's just it was yeah not by any means any kind of a class but um just kind of makes you feel familiar <laughs> with, with the tarot what it's about and all that kind of stuff you should see him he's just completely passed out and he just like kicked the kicked the thing out of the way but anyway no, i think i think this is this is a good little introductory 
um, feel for maybe somebody who is a little afraid to, to venture into the whole world of Tarot maybe feels more comfortable now. Yeah. <laughs> and if you guys have any ideas of what you want us to talk about in the next video, yeah. then leave your comments below because we'll read them and see if we get any inspirational ideas. Yeah. As to what the next video is going to be about. Yeah. So oh, I just thought of something like uh, sometime one thing that we can look into is like, some of the cards like in combination can tell you if somebody's upset with you or they're, you know, like maybe some sets of cards that indicate things that they could look out for in their own spreads. So, uh. yeah. Yeah. And of course you also have the, um, star signs that go with each card as well. Like the emperors, the Aries, the, the um, Oh, true. The strength is the, so it really depends on how deep you want to go into it. I personally don't read, the cards like that, but some people do. So, and that's just a fun way to add things. You know, if you're looking into a situation and a certain person that you're involved with is a Leo and the strength color comes out, then you can think, okay, they're definitely talking about that person because to me that, you know, or, you know, the king of wands, you think, okay, that's her. So. Yeah, and two yeah. queens can be two different people, you in the card, yeah. figure out who's, who, who's you and who's the karmic out of those two cards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you can do all that. So you can go with <laughs> you can kind of go as deep as you want can't you really with when it comes yeah. to reading totally yeah perfect well thank you guys so much for joining us today yeah. and i hope that this helps we hope it helps um if you have any questions then put them below and we'll maybe try and answer some if we can if we if we see them so yeah yeah, and, yeah. until the next video guys thank you very much for joining us we love you bye guys <laughs> You good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm good. I'm oh, good, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this session. We're gonna be talking, oh, I forgot to introduce you. Hang on a second, let me do that. Yeah. <laughs> there always seems to be a blooper before I start my intro and now, yeah. We, just, we did our first video, though. I did that little blooper, didn't I? And then did the intro. And now it seems like when we film this, something happens that makes us giggle that I use as the beginning of the video. Um, <clears throat> okay. Spirit works out. Hello, everyone. So funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to be able to get through the intro? <laughs> okay. Oh. I want to look at you sometimes. Right. <sighs> okay, all right. All right. Okay.